He sounds like a Kevin. Kevins are the worst? I know. I dropped my food and I literally just cleaned in here today. Who, whoever asked what I'm having for dinner, I'm having uh, some um, green beans, almond bean. I just want to not drop the green beans. I want to eat the green beans. Kevin Kelpers. Let's try it on. Hi, it's me, Kevin. Kevin Kelpers. I'm your best friend, aren't I? Yo, 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 I'm about to spit. I'm about to spit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spit. Never had oxygen before. Give me more H2O. Yeah, yeah. I never before, never want to see the surface world. Not even once, not even twice. Don't take me up there. Don't serve me on rice. I have a lot of strong feelings about Kevin's rap career. <laughs> Filthiest GK is like, yo, this fish got bars. <laughs> this fish got bars. Don't even trip, man. This fish got bars. Spitting crazy. Code Miko better watch out. Hey, Kevin. How do you feel about Code Miko? Oh, man! I've never seen anything like her under the sea. Do we know for a fact that she's all human? Computer human? Or is she like, you know, part fish? A fish part? fish you know everyone thinks that that whole thing what you just did was like a little a little thirsty and i don't i didn't know that fish could be thirsty but you were listen i am a fish i don't have a school i don't have a family i don't have a loved one i just have my bubbles Okay, I want someone to hold at night. I want someone to wrap my fins around and say, Oh, I love you. <laughs> this fish is a lot, man. I don't know how you guys feel about the fish, but I got feelings about the fish. They ain't all positive. We could try a different puppet. Cap Capulet is in your corner, though. Love you, fish! Which one's Cap Capulet? Hi, Hi Cap Capulet! Which, which one are you? Which one are you, Cap Capulet? I, I I heard that the reason why uh, Code Biko is so popular is because she has very um, controversial opinions. So I tried to track down some controversial opinions. For for example, um, legs ugly. Am I right? He's just gonna hate human stuff. Some seasoning. <laughs> They want to season you, fish. They want to season you. No! You don't want to season me? I'm a fish. Do you not realize there's already plenty of salt in the sea? I am a very well-seasoned fish. 
fish, pineapple, or pizza, go. I don't want pizza or pineapple. I just want to be in the water. No, no salt. Why are you doing this to me? Patient Zero says my legs aren't ugly, Kevin. Prove it. Prove it. I think all legs are ugly. I like fins. I like gills. I'm also gonna another another country. Oh. Another controversial opinion. <laughs> Fresh water is for losers. <laughs> I refuse. I refuse to let this stream go completely out of control here. It's not your choice, human ass. <laughs> I don't know why he has to laugh like that. You know, I was just trying to have an ordinary stream. You know, we do some coal mine songs. Denise got me this, this tambourine so I don't keep opening up the skin of one of my fingers from snapping during the coal mine songs. I was going to do a couple of working in the coal mine. And now we're just like, this is just Looney Tunes. This isn't Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes is scared of my ass. Looney Tunes is scared of me. They don't want to have any real fish up in there. You see, you see a, a fish Looney Tune? No. Why? Because Jack Water owes me money. He owes me money, motherfucker! He owes me! I'm not trying to be a part of the bangles. I'm trying to just have a stream where we talk about ordinary things like like getting through it and mental health and, and, and nice stuff, you know? Hedge Piggy, you know something? I will calm down. I will calm down. For you. For you. Because you feed me and you're nice to me. Okay? You'd see a Lieberman tribute to the Bangles? We got the beat, we got the beat, we got the beat. Yeah, we got the beat. Is this fish rolling in the deep? I don't do drugs. I don't do drugs, okay? I'm a clean fish. Clean. I want my waters clean. I want my body clean. My body is a temple. My body is a wonderland. My body is a wonderland in my head. My body is a wonderland. Okay. Yikes. Um. Don't. No more singing. Okay. No. No one. No one should have to hear you. You sing. My body is waterland, and that's why it's mine. Shamir on YouTube, can we get some A's in chat? We met in Miami at a meetup in 2014. A Libra friend named Shamir, what's up? Can we get some A's in chat? What up, YMS? Hello. Some eggs in chat. Okay. I'm learning some things. One, it's possible to do this. Two, should it be? <laughs> Three, don't eat and cartoon in stream. I am eating string beans and almonds. Green bean, almond bean, almond bean. I'm not going to choke, okay? I'm not going to choke. Yes, you are. I'm not going to choke. You are going to choke. You've got a dumb throat and a dumb mouth and, like, dumb lungs for all your oxygen. I am a human being. And that does not inherently mean that I am going to choke. Nor are my organs dumb. 
I am not going to choke. I am eating calmly and I am streaming and I'm running the OBS. Oh, food, food, food. Oh, yeah. I just, I just want to have a stream. Please, please let me stream. Mm, no. No, I don't think so. I think we need to have a long talk about all of your problems. My problems? What problems? I don't have problems. You have problems, fish. No, you have problems. I do not have problems. YMS4, don't you dare compare me to Donald Trump, okay? Donald Trump is a monster, and I am a fish. Is that Steve Zaragoza's voice? No, that is clearly a fish. That is a fish. I'm going to have just a few more green beans. And he's not going to interrupt me. In fact, we're going to switch views right here. This bit is not up to scale. So how's everybody? How was your day? What's going on? Guys, if we just do fish puns the whole time, you're handing the show to him. You're telling him that this is okay. And it is not okay. We are trying to have an ordinary stream where we talk and we have fun, we laugh, I make you laugh, do a couple coal mine songs. Kevin's voice is kind of Steve-ish. I, I don't I don't hear that. I you know what? It actually it it is it is a pet peeve. Nate goes live. It is a pet peeve uh, that, like, every time I would do something back in the day, people would compare it to Steve Jarrett or be like, it would be funnier if Steve did it, or, like, something like that. No, it's just something I'm doing. Do a coal mine song about me. What info do you need? Kelton, have you, have you never had a coal mine song, Kelton, on YouTube? And Shamir, you need a coal mine song. I need to know where you're from. I need to know your pet's name. I need to know your favorite sandwich because we both did improv. So you don't endorse any fish puns. No, I do not endorse any fish puns. Not even a little bit of fish puns. Come on, Lieberman. Don't leave me hanging. That's not a fish pun. How is hanging a fish pun? Well, my ancestors were left hanging from hooks that you humans put in the water, so you tell me! Are you just trying to be outraged? Is this, is this fun for you to just torture everybody talking about this stuff? I don't know. Is it fun for you to listen to me sing? People, people who love it, people are the worst kind of people. <sighs> I need to rid myself of this fish. You got a lollipop from the ice cream van at 3, 3 p.m. Tell me more. Okay. Kelton. Which of those three things, you said Jean-Vierre, Foots, Donaire. 
Which of those things is the place? Which is the pet's name? And which is the sandwich? <laughs> Are you talking about like a donor kebab? You like pepperoni plus steak. Uh, and I'm a Canadian American from Toronto in Miami, Florida. Hooray! He's from Foots. Jotante, I'm not sure. But we got a couple of coal mine songs and we got a brand new tambourine. So I need your help, okay? <clears throat> All right. Kelton is from... <laughs> Kelton is from jean Pierre. Has a pet named Foots and likes a donut kebab. Working in a coal mine all day, every single day with Foots right by your side. Making sure everybody knows that a donut kebab is the best kind of sandwich he in the coal mine, having a good time. Making sure that everybody's having a good time in the coal mine. Hanging with Shamir, who likes the pepperoni plus steak sandwich. And also is Canadian American in the coal mine. Miami vibes up in the coal mine. Isn't that nice up in the coal mine with the family in the coal mine? Bang! Welcome to the coal mine. Shamir and, and Kelton from YouTube. Thank you, Zaf Daddy, for the five-month resub and the hydrate. Oh, Kevin. Kevin, you got to meet Zaffir Cakes. Zaffir Cakes is awesome. Which one of them is Zaffir Cakes? They all look the same to me. Yeah, okay, is this like another, like, fish? Like, oh, all fish look the same. All people look the same. Um, no. Thanks for taking it to, like, a racism place. This isn't a race thing. This isn't a species thing. They're all just names. How do I know which is which? I can't breed. You can't... You can't breed? I can't breed. Breed. You know, breed. I hear what you're saying. You can't breed. I can't read. Okay. Oh, guys, he can't read. Uh, Zaffir Cakes is is well, he's uh he's that one. Um, he's not being a speciesist. I think it was me, kind of like I was taking it to that place, and that's that's on me. Um, Zaffir Cakes says, Kevin, what? Who? Who? Did somebody? Did somebody say? Did somebody say something? Shamir says, "Ask the fish if he eats anchovies." Cannibal? Why would I eat anchovies? I'm a fish. I am a fish. I eat flakes. I eat plankton. I eat kelp. I do not eat fish. He's very clear about this. He's been very clear. This fish is starting to get a bit crabby. Patient zero, you know. <laughs> Glenn, that's a great question. Ask me once I've figured out a justification for it. <laughs> Hi, 80s guy. Hello. Pescatarian fish. No, he doesn't eat fish. To be a pescatarian means you would eat fish. I would say he's probably ovo-lacto-vegetarian, right? No, I don't eat milk. I don't eat dairy. How would I get dairy? I'm under the water. I'm inside the water. Right, okay. Well, <clears throat> I guess he's vegan. He's a plant-based fish. Um... At work still, but happened to catch YMS in chats. I had to do tradition. <laughs> Thank you very much. How's everybody doing tonight? What a pleasure it is to have you here. Um, Let's see. Ooh, I'm still eating these green beans. The Omni Show says, have you ever seen a fish eat? I mean, I've seen them go... Oh, 
Okay. So, first of all, I find that deeply offensive as a portrayal of a fish. Ah! Sharks! 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 Oh, for crying out loud! I don't like these emotes. They trick me, you know. I think that I'm safe, and then suddenly I think I'm not safe, and I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to find a baseline here. I don't want to be freaking out all day. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I know what you mean. You just want to be able to hang out. Let's see. Kelton asks, what was the last movie you watched, and have I ever seen a movie called Thunder Road? No, I don't think I've seen Thunder Road. Uh, last movie I watched was Paddington. I rewatched Paddington as a reward to myself for getting through a long day. Paddington is one of the best movies of the last 20 years. Paddington and Paddington 2. Technically, Paddington 2 is better. It's a better movie. I prefer Paddington 1. Watch Thunder Road on... Give me the log line. Give me the log line, Kelton. It takes a lot to get get me to watch a new movie that is not a bad movie. Is Kevin's favorite movie Finding Nemo? Kevin, is your favorite movie Finding Nemo? Who? Oh. What? Huh? Sorry, I was um I forgot I forgot that I was doing this. Is your favorite movie Finding Nemo? Oh, Finding Nemo is such a beautiful story. You know, at the end of the day, all a fish wants is to find their way home or to find their way to a home and also to eat food and just generally be super nice. And it's a nice movie, you know. I feel like they really captured the spirit of being a fish. Oh, my God, people! Oh! Oh! Uh. Oh my goodness! Shamir, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Where do fishermen go to get their hair cut? The barber shop. <laughs> is that is that supposed to be funny? Because it's not funny at all. Alright, so this is just some things are just not going to be funny to fish, guys. You know, like we have a fish in the room. Maybe we just we try to keep things accessible. Oh, Kelton, I, I have heard of this movie. Some people I went to college with worked on this movie. Yes, I am aware of it. Yeah, it's 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 funny and it's fucked up. I'm I'm aware of Thunder Road. I did not know that it was on Netflix, though. Mm hmm Kelton, have you ever seen The Foot Fist Way? If you liked Thunder Road, you will probably like The Foot Fist Way. Shamir with another $5 super chat. Thank you. Why can't blind people eat fish? Because it's seafood. You know something? I just really feel like you're just trying to get my goat, my proverbial goat. Obviously, I am not a goat, but you are trying to get it. If I had one, I am a fish. I want you to talk to me as a fish. I want you to respect me as a fish and respect my family, my values, just everything that I need you to protect, okay? Okay. Jeez. I feel like Kevin is turning into a jellyfish. <laughs> What's so funny? I don't... Uh... I don't get it. So... Because a jellyfish is not a fish, really. It's... It's something very different. And uh, Just if you could explain it to me a little bit better. God, why are we throwing things? We're throwing trash away in the sea now? You got, we're throwing trash into the sea. Come on, Mel Gurr. Let's not be litter bugs. Mobby Nerd on YouTube, hello. And Wardski on Twitch, good to see you. And yes, I've seen The Greasy Strangler. That movie is super fucked up. Um, 
Let's see. I just joined and a fish is yelling at me. What's going on? What did I do? Mobby nerd. It's nothing that you did. It must be something I did in a previous life that I am cursed with this fish that just is, is, is not leaving the stream so we can just kind of like hang out and do our normal thing. Like he really wants to be heard. So Shamir, thank you for the $5 super chat on YouTube. Why are fish easy to measure? Because they bring their own scales. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Okay, so I want you to imagine for a moment that I said, uh, hey, why are, um, why are humans, um, why are humans so, so easy to kill? Oh, it's because they have a skin. Or, or why are humans so overweight? It's because they have a skid. Does that feel nice? Does that does that feel good to you? Does that make you proud? Are you proud of this? Are you proud? I came on here as a courtesy to make you feel good about your lives and all that you have to deal with as surface dwellers, okay? And at every turn, I am being met with rudeness, with teasing i'm just trying to be a fish okay oh shamir i adore you thank you so much for the super chat and um if you're on youtube right now or if you're on twitch and you want to hop over to youtube we actually just activated our memberships on youtube um tier one is a dollar less than the uh sub subscriptions on twitch Eventually, we are going to be demonetizing this Twitch and uh, doing, if you want to be subscribed in that way, you can hop over to YouTube. You got all the emotes. I'm working on getting all the chat commands to work over there, um, but that is something that we are in the process of. Folks who are uh, tier two or tier three on YouTube uh, also get in the credits of the stream. Um, much love to everybody supporting us as we kind of like test out this transition and and start moving forward to uh i don't know to the future i guess oh my god hedge piggy says kevin is trying to be an alpha but he's just a beta <laughs> okay i do not know how to put this any more clearly i am not a beta fish. I am a rare, rubbed, bread-breasted fish. I'm not a beta fish. I'm a rubbed, bread-breasted fish. You're a robin, red-breasted fish. That's what I said. But I'm not a beta fish. That is an actual type of fish. It is not just something to throw around, okay? I just, I want to be happy and comfortable with you. Hmm. Well, Zaffer Cakes giving a shout out to Patient Zero. Thank you so much for the for the uh, for the shout out. Shamir, you're coming a producer. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much. Thank you so much for becoming a producer over on YouTube. You rule. Thank you very much, gang. Can we get some A's in chat, please? A's and eggs. That's so cool. <laughs> Patient Zero giving a shout out to Zaffer Cakes. Game recognized game. Filthiest GK wants to know, it's a lot of red. Is he is he gang affiliated? I don't think he's gang affiliated. Do, do they even have gangs under the sea? I don't think so. Welcome, Sammy. How was the rest of your stream? I'm so glad I got to pop in and see a little bit of Super Liminal. How was the rest of it? Everyone, I want to know what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what's going on in your world today. What is happening? Okay? Don't let the fish deter you. Oh, no. Nausea. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry to hear that, Sammy. Why are you nauseous? Maybe you should consider taking some Dramamine for the motion sickness. You know, when I feel sick, 
it's usually because the water is just blowing me all over the place. And, you know, I just want to be able to stay in one spot without having to have to... It is motion sickness! I knew it was motion sickness! Oh my goodness, you should take that drama bead. One time, uh, uh, so, uh, a couple tossed the, content, the, the, the content, contents of their of their of their picnic basket into the water and there was drum bead in there and I drank some of the drum bead and I can tell you my sickness went away pretty quickly huh that was a long story guess what I would love to know what tell me <laughs> welcome big way good to see you fish have schools is school fish slang for gang Care to comment? Oh, I need to like learn. I'm like, I'm, I'm still learning this, guys. I'm still learning. Hold on. Uh, school is not, is not slang for gang. Okay. Um, it is a group, but it is not a gang. I'm not affiliated. Look at me. Do I have any tats? Do I am I tattooed? No. I am not tattooed. I am nice. Well, you can be nice and have tattoos. Kevin, come on. Let's not judge anybody. Shamir, you're the sweetest. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. I hope to see you on May 2nd regardless. I'm glad to see you again, and I hope you come by. We stream every Monday through Thursday uh 9 a.m and 6 p.m pacific time um okay so it was your very first first person view game and it made you sick i'm so sorry to hear that against <laughs> you're in the nile <laughs> patient zero is going off oh sammy your ear sleep pillow arrived i need to see these i need to see pictures need to see pictures we didn't get to have a lens this week Maybe we should do some design. Do you think Kevin would like watching us design some stuff? Someone asked me earlier how I'm doing this. And, um, you're kidding. I love that. Shamir says one Lieber friend from the old hangouts back in 2014 is still his friend in Aberdeen, Scotland. That's amazing. Ever like comics or, ma or manga? What's something, so also what's something super nostalgic or I'm super nostalgic from um, the 90s? Hmm. Um, I like graphic novels. I never followed any comics like month to month, though I have a couple of like s random issues, single issues. Um in my bedroom back in New Jersey. Manga, not so much, though I liked anime back in the day. Like, back when, back when, um, I mean, obviously Toonami, but then when Adult Swim first did the Saturday night anime, like, I watched that religiously for a few years. Um, super nostalgic from the 90s. Just not, like, the creeping sense of dread. I, like... Is it fucked up that I miss, like, American arrogance? <laughs> but, like, not the kind... Maybe just from the perspective of a kid where it's not, like, gross and it's not... Because there still is plenty of American arrogance. But I feel like it was harmless back in the day. But I guess it wasn't. We all just thought it was. So maybe I'm just saying the one thing I miss from the 90s is, like, uh, how little we understood about how other people saw us. Or just, like, what's the word I'm looking for? ignorance <laughs> you're waiting for me to become the very first fish vtuber that's an actual fish thank you you know there's just not a lot of representation in the space i really want everybody to know that fish are friendly they're hanging out you know we're party fish you know what i mean a clownfish you want to get a clownfish up in here you're gonna have a great time you know what i mean I just feel like everybody judges us before we even get to come out of the water, so to speak. Hmm. Guys, Kevin does bring up a point, gang. Maybe we, we rush to judgment on Kevin. 
is Kevin a floundling father? A floundering father? Are you a father? A floundering father? Oh, like founding father, kids. I get it. Do you get it, Kevin? No, cause I'm not a I'm not a flounder. I already said I'm a rubbed bread breasted fish. I mean, that's just that's just that's just who I am. You can't change these scales, baby. You just can't change these scales, baby. Kevin, do you have a baby mama? Uh, who, who, who you, who you been, who you been talking to? I don't, look, oh, oh, all I know is I found these eggs just sitting there, okay? And if nobody fertilized these eggs, they were going to die. And if I didn't fertilize these eggs, these eggs would have just died. They would have passed away, okay? So, yeah, I got some kids swimming around out there. But that doesn't mean I'm an unbit father. I just, I was just doing my duty, you know what I mean? Yeah, I got my thing on, but I got my thing on for a good cause. I saved lives, man. That's, that's heavy. That's, <laughs> That's the best fish pun of the night. The best fish pun, fish pun of the night goes to kids. Kids these days with the best fish pun of the night. That sounds like abalone. <laughs> best fish pun of the night. Uh, uh. Did Kevin come from the Red Sea? Why? Because he's so salty? You know, I resent that. The salt in the Red Sea is so intense, no fish can actually survive in there. So what you are saying, when you make that kind of a joke, what you're trying to say is that I am so salty that I would kill all other fish just by being around them, or I could only be by myself. Jeez, guys. I didn't think about it that way. You know, sometimes stuff gets crazy. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Bark About on YouTube is giving YouTube a trial just for me going through some Twitch withdrawal, but I appreciate it. Do I remember a comment from Full House, the, the Golden Retriever? Yeah, of course. People loved Golden Retrievers in the 90s. And then at some point, Corgis just whoosh, took over. Um, <laughs> Kids. Oh, so was that you, kids? That one cut Kevin deep. Cut him... Cut him, cut him right to the bone. Am I, am I right, guys? You know, I do have bones. And they get removed. When people like you grab someone like me out of the water and try to eat me. So, yeah, maybe don't say bones. Maybe don't make bone jokes. Bonehead. Don't, don't call me a bonehead. Um, oh, it's Tucker Crap. Do we get channel points here? Um, I don't think there is a channel points, a channel points, uh, thing. I don't think there is a channel points thing. I don't know. That's one thing I haven't figured out. What I'm hoping is that I can figure out a way to replicate it through some sort of bot. And, um, anybody who wants to move over from Twitch to YouTube, I can somehow in state however many channel points that they have and that they will continue to be able to earn them or maybe even faster that would be cool youtube has a ton of changes coming to youtube live soon yeah well it's gonna have clip clipping clips is coming i think by the summer there's there's like a test page where you can test it out it's pretty cool pardon me my word um do you have a place for details on my setup? No. I set up an Amazon blacksmith thing under my stream, but it's just a gag. It's just like full of cans of <laughs> compressed air. Um, but I do have a, I have a SkyTech gaming PC. Um, that's what I use to uh to run to run these streams. Um, as for how I'm doing this back and forth, like being able to have 
me and the cartoon at the same time here just to, i'm gonna break the reality for just a second okay no don't break the reality what are you trying to do man come on see so i actually have two cameras running at the same time i have my gopro which is my onboard sort of um just like webcam and then that's going into a cam link so that I'm able to use this GoPro and have it run at full 4K. Then I have my uh, my Logitech C920 webcam doing uh, my performance capture, and that's going into Adobe Character Animator, which I have open on my other display. So you can kind of see it there, just like that. And we can do that with like with any puppet. Um, here, let's see. Let's 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 check out another puppet. Oh, that's gonna look weird. Give me a sec. Hi, Riyadh Trip One Hundred. What up? Um. Oh, let's hang out with Doctor Apple Smith. Ooh, that's not right. Uh, hmm, that's, I guess I'm keying out, what am I keying out, white? I'm keying out white? Ooh, Earsley pillow? Let me see. Hey, Caitlin! Yeah, well, that's Kevin. Do a golden retriever puppet for nostalgia purposes. Yeah, I worked out this fish. I worked out Kevin before uh, before the start of stream. And I'm still building my own puppets. But the goal is to get to a place where I'm able to, like, very seamlessly... Oh, you are watching earlier from school? Thank you. I want to get to a place where I'm very seamlessly able to, um, you know, move between me and a cartoon. And then swap from cartoon to cartoon. And then do, like, an interview format. So, you know, I'll be interacting with a guest and talking about all the things that I like to talk about, making jokes and all kinds of fun things, and then and then I'll be like, Whoa, guys, come on. Like, let's just let's just chill out, all right? Like, I've got serious questions for our guest. Um So, Pete Davidson, the best butt uh made some allegations um about uh about drug use. I don't know if you wanna comment on that. My guess is that the best butt is not, in fact, a member of your staff, but I, I'm not entirely sure. And then I would click the correct thing, and I would be like, Let me sing you a song. Under the sea, under the sea. Okay, so... Under the sea is not like a dirge that's horrifying and haunts your dreams typically under the sea is like a friendly song like under the sea de -be -be -de -be, under the sea i find that offensive this song was written long before you were born okay this song is a beautiful song about what it means to live under the sea and die under the sea under the sea See, you don't think with an audience of humans, you're going to like upset some people, you know, like, come on, man. Let's think, think of the room. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, that's well, all you're asking. That is all I'm asking. That's what I'm saying, Patient Zero. That's not how I have heard the song before either. I think that's really just your spin on it. I don't think that's a real fish song. You don't know anything about fish songs. We also have one that goes, that goes, Down in the water, oh, I will dine on plankton. Oh, I have many scales. I have 
reason to believe that that is not true. And if it is true, God help us all. I do not want this for me or for my viewers. Okay. Uh, Cap Capulet says, run it like a river, Kevin. <laughs> wind in the water. How'd they get wind up in our water? The humans put pipes inside of the water. That's, okay, let's not make assumptions about pipes and who put them where. And let's just not sing about it at the very least, okay? <laughs> Parody Island Pictures! Welcome on YouTube. Longtime SourceFed viewer here. Do you ever hang out with the old crew? I miss the team. Um, I don't, but they all hang out with each other, and uh, a lot of us are on Twitch. So, um, Steve streams pretty often from the Valley Folk account. Maud and, uh, Maud and Trisha stream a lot. Subdick is like a freaking king of Twitch. He's like in the top 200 people on Twitch. Um, and he streams Monday through Friday mornings, um, if you wanted to say hi to him. But yeah, thanks for stopping by, Parody Island Pictures. Have I ever given you a welcome song? Filthiest GK says, fuck, I miss SourceFed. I was, when I was exploring, um, uh, I'm trying to figure out, I still haven't gotten them to, to tokenize any tweets. I want, I want SourceFed related tweets. I want to own them. I want to own SourceFed related tweets. Nope, they still haven't given me any of the tweets that I tried to tokenize. And I hope I did it right. For anyone who missed this morning's show, so um, there's something called a non fungible token. What is this? This is a one of a kind piece of crypto. There is only one of it, and it's essentially the same as, like, a collectible in the real world, but it's digital. So, like, you know, if I had a one-of-a-kind painting by Degas, okay, um, then I would be the only one who owns that painting. There is a process by which you can own a tweet as a piece of digital art. So I want to own the first and last tweets from uh from the, all the source fed accounts and then i kind of if it costs me absolutely nothing there is a part of me that would love to own every tweet that william haynes has ever posted just because i think that that would be incredibly funny but first they have to give me the first tweet that i uh tokenized and i'm having an issue even just getting that one tokenized. Compassion management issues. Hello, how are you? What a pleasure it is. Someone asked earlier. Someone asked earlier, what kind of advice are we giving? About anything. I'm happy to give, yeah, general advice. Do I have any advice for do's and don'ts of content creators? I have a ton. Dr. Awesome Jen, hello. What am I eating? I am eating green bean almondine. It's one of my go-to meals of late. It's just steamed green beans, some um, dry fried, um, dry fried almonds, a little bit of olive oil. Um. Dr. Awesome Jen asked, I need some advice. Should I go out to dinner right now or heat up leftovers that I'm tired of? You already know the answer. And as soon as I give you an answer, you will know which one of those two things you want to do. So, Dr. Awesome Jen, let's not think about what should I do. Let's think about what I want to do. Dr. Awesome Jen, you should heat up your leftovers. How did it feel? Which one do you want to do? So, one of the big things that I get on people about and on myself about, because it's important, is the following. Putting on the pants. That's what's up. Get that food, Dr. Awesome Jen. So, I think that the word should 
is one of the cruelest words in uh, the Amer the English language. It implies an obligation. And in life, in my opinion, there are no obligations. There are only op opportunities. This is my point of view. When you say I should do something, what you are really saying is either I want to do something or I think someone else would want me to do this thing. Instead, say, I want to do this, and you'll know whether or not it's true. And you'll feel more empowered doing the things you actually want to do, but are a pain in the ass to do. I should go grocery shopping. Or, I want to go grocery shopping. I want to have groceries. Like putting on pants. I should put on pants. Well, you don't want to go outside without the pants on. So, you want to put on pants. Put on the pants. Um, do's and don'ts for content creators. Um, respect your audience. Don't overpromise. Don't promise things in general. Just do things. I make this mistake a lot. I promise things. And then I have to deliver on them. And then reality sets in and I'm not able to deliver. And then suddenly there's a thing that I said I would do that I'm not doing. Which reduces trust between you and your audience. Even if you're like this. Don't promise things. However... You should be consistent in at least one or two things. Communicate that consistency and then do it. Like, for example, if you want to stream and you want to grow as a streamer, you have to pick a time that you're going to stream and you have to stream at that time. Here's why. We talked about this the other day. People build their schedules around what they want to have in their life, right? We curate our lives the same way we curate our Instagram feeds. We only fill it with what we want or need to have in it. So, why should I make time for you? Is a question that everybody should be asking. Whatever kind of content you make. And at this point, like, even if you're not trying to be a content creator as a job, I had, a, I had an epiphany today. That helped me a lot with some imposter syndrome stuff. We're all content creators and we all have to be. Society will continue to digitalize and move online. And we are all members of society. Welcome, Paul the Dude. Thank you so much, Shamir, for the $5 super chat. Oh, for the $5 sticker. Pair character lifting some weight saying, keep it up. Thank you. Um... We all have to get better at being content creators because that is ultimately where society is moving. It's where social life is moving. And we need to be able to communicate who we are to other people online in order to not be lonely. Life is very lonely in the digital age because we're not going out. Because we're worse at being in public. We're worse at making friends. There's less incentive to do it in person. It's not a safe. That's right, patient zero. We live in a society. <laughs> so, let me give the example that I used to give in my class, okay? So, I used to read web comics pretty religiously. Um, and... One of them that I read pretty often was a, was a comic called Something Positive. Something Positive is a web comic. It's still running. I haven't read it in years. Here's why. So I would go every day to somethingpositive.net to see a new comic. And usually a new comic would get posted every day. Until one day there wouldn't be a comic. And then I would go back to the site a few times during that day to see, well, maybe the comic's late. No comic. 
Go the next day. No comment. Hmm. Okay. Well, it must be late. Spam the website. Maybe I'll get a comic. No comic. Days go by. Couple weeks go by. Suddenly there's a comic. Now, what's going on here? The author didn't communicate that he was taking a break. There just wasn't a comic. And every time I went to the site and there wasn't a comic when I thought that there would be a comic, holy fucking shit, my connection to the comic and to him dropped. The trust plummeted. And the space that I had carved out in my life for this comic, I didn't have anymore. So even when the comic came back, I was less attached to it. So here's why this is important, right? When you are making content, you are asking somebody to make room for you in their life. And you have an unwritten, an unspoken agreement, which is that when you make the content or when, when I expect the content, if you tell me to expect content, then I expect it and it should be there. So either don't tell me to expect it and let it be a surprise or make sure it's there when it's supposed to be. And if it can't be, let me know not to show up like a ding dong and feel like a ding dong. Mobby nerd on YouTube says, I can tell you as an Aspie, it's like hard mode sometimes. So my brother has Asperger's too. Um, the from what I know about it, and tell me if I'm speaking out of turn, right? It's a lot easier when you know what the rules are, right? Like, it's like it's like processing information in a different way. Once you understand the framework and the rules, you know what you can and can't do, what all your options are. But society doesn't seem to have rules, right? Like, it seems nebulous and everybody has different rules for different sets of people. And it'd be a lot easier if there was just one set of rules. I can understand that it's on hard mode because there's like, th there's actual important data you don't have. Tone of voice, facial expressions, like societal shit. So one of my first jobs was writing and directing educational films for um, middle schoolers and high schoolers with autism and Asperger's trying to explain social interactions. Um, so I, I feel you, man. I feel you, Mobby Nerd, and I'm glad that you're here. Yeah, Cardigans and Loafer says rules are good. Rules are good for me, too. Rules are very good. I love rules. Because once I understand what the rules are, then I can figure out where I can live in the thing. When there's no rules, there's also too many possibilities. It's overwhelming. Nixel, good to see you. 80 says, I see you in the chat list, antisocial kitty. Ian says, big rules energy. Love rules. Um, Capulet says, do you have trouble being or feeling genuine versus exaggerated when, if not playing a character or role? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Absolutely. So, like, so I back in, I mean, back at SourceFed, right? And back when I was doing my original round of like Matt Lieberman, Lieber friends content. I felt like I had to be a role model and I had to be something more than I was. And when I was at work, I was super depressed and I felt like I had to like push out my positivity and you get, you get used to like turning it on, um, instead of just being. And what I've loved so much about Twitch is like, I really do feel like I can just kind of be me because the people who have kind of gathered around me don't really need me to make sense or be anything else. Um, it's been a really healing process actually. Um, but I do feel like, because like I'm also trying to grow. Right. And like, if I'm, I, I have a fear in the back of my head. I do. Where it's like, if I don't, if I'm not able to turn it on and bring energy and bring comedy, then like, what else is there? 
What else is there? Will people still be there? Will people be attracted to it? Like what's socially attractive? What's good content? What's entertaining? Instead of like just being. I get super nervous. People tell me all the time that I come off as confident and maybe I am, but I've never felt confident ever. Um, and I have to like make myself feel comfortable in social situations. Here I have all the power, right? I don't have as much to worry about except people just going away. But if people went away, okay, I'll turn off the stream. I'll, I'll play a game or something or I'll work on my puppets, you know? In fact, it's when I try to be more creative or more out there that I get more nervous. Like when I'm doing this thing with, with the cartoon, right? Not everybody's going to be into this. In fact, there are definitely people who bounced off the stream early in the stream and didn't come back. And they might never come back. That's a real fear, man. Oh, Ian, it's nice to meet you. Hello, it's me, Kevin. Hi. It's a pleasure to have you here under the sea. See, you see, you see what, you see, you see that whole thing? Like, that's very fun for me. I think that that's super funny. Um, one of my favorite streams that I've ever gotten to do was, a, was a, essentially a test run for this, where it was Remy Lacroix and Remy's mother shopping for shoes. And it was one of the lowest attended streams ever. Because like, is it weird that I'm aroused from that? I mean, I think it's weirder that you told us. Hey, 80s just went on YouTube. That's awesome. 80s and Nixel are on YouTube. Remy for 12 hours was too much, though. I was thinking in his voice. Which is a lot. Remy like, on Twitch, on YouTube. What? What on earth are you talking about? Oh, you beautiful people. What a pleasure it is to see you. Radical Dan. Oh, on YouTube. What a joy it is. Um, just joined, but glad to see you eating stuff and talking about cool past streams. Yes, I love all of these things. We're coming up on a year. I still don't know what to do. I still don't know what to do for the big one year. We're going to do another charity stream later in the spring. But it's going to be a year in less than a month. Isn't that wild? Isn't that freaking crazy? Yeah, Patient Zero. One year. Almost all of my friends on Twitch started streaming this year. Keep making those cartoons. Well, that's the goal, Pigeon93. The goal is to be able to have have me over here talking to a guest and then have me come in and be like, hey, you know, I've got something to say about fish. And, blah, 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 blah. and then have another cartoon be like, blah, 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 blah. that's like, that's the fun. And then, right, here's, what's, here's what fucking came to me as a badass business model today. Ho, 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 ho. The better I get with um with character animator. Fuck, man. Source fed animated was so huge, right? What if I just like sell sell puppets and sell animateds of two YouTubers of their own shit that they can then post as content? What the fucking fuck? How how and why is not everyone doing that? Oh my god. Like, animated shit always is great. Shamir ate fish once at the beach by accident. I thought it was chicken. <laughs> oh, yeah, you thought it was chicken? You thought I was chicken, huh? You thought a fish was chicken? We're not! We're flaky! We're not dense! We're not chicken! You just ate us! You ate a fish in front of the ocean for all of us to see! No! That's intense. That's very intense. Not a fan of that. 
The fish are going to rise up, man. And take back the surface world. <laughs> yeah, pigeon. Down at the spot and boy, I'm on. Well, fuck it. Down on the spot and boy, I'm on third and main. Buy them by the hundred pack. Buy them by the thou. Buy those spiders. Eight legs, one body, a million ways to cook it and eat it. Mm-mm. There's a whole anime movie about the fish taking over called Gyo. I've never heard of that, Radical Dan, but now I have to watch it. Got to, got to watch it. Exciting changes, exciting changes, exciting changes are happening, exciting changes. They're coming. Pigeon93 says, this is why I'm here. I'm glad you're here for whatever reason. Anyone else have any other questions? Did I answer the other question? I should try doing some flash skits with guests, some sketches. And uh, for the streaming anniversary. Hmm. Anybody else have any uh, suggestions for the anniversary? Oh, yay. Catherine's back. Sure, Dan. What's going on? A bit more on the serious side. How serious? Know that if it's like super serious, I'm, I'm I can only get into it a little bit. Oh my God! Yes, for the anniversary, we're gonna go back into <laughs> back into our Animal Crossing town and visit Lieberberg and see what has come of it in the nine months since we last visited. <laughs> oh God! There's still a monument to feet. The person, not the body part. Ana Yume, hello. How are you? Good evening. Thank you for the host. Ana Yume, how's your night going? Mobby Nerd says you'll come back to the village. It's going to look like Mad Max. Probably. Speed run of all the highlights. From my first year on Twitch for the anniversary. A speed run of them? Oh, boy. That's a good idea. I'll have to have it be Twitch only. If only because, like, if we're going to react or do a uh, chicken movie. We can't do it on YouTube. Enjoying a little ham and cheese sandwich? Lovely. Sum it up. My girlfriend is starting to take over my house is starting to take over my house. I live with my little brother and my dad. They're starting to feel left out as well. I don't know how to properly handle this situation. Um, So Radical Dan, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice that I have learned in my six year relationship, which is that when you have a problem in your relationship, and I'm, I'm so not trying to embarrass you for bringing this up, I'm happy to help you. So thank you for bringing it up, but as a rule, other than like my therapist, I don't talk about my relationship with anybody else. If there's an issue in the relationship, you have to be honest and upfront and direct in the relationship. Yeah, and it sounds like there's some boundaries that need to be set. So you need to say, hey, you can't take over my house. Or like, it feels like you're taking over my house. And I don't know if you're saying that your little brother and your dad are telling you that they feel uncomfortable or if it seems like they're uncomfortable. I would find out. Um, I don't know what takeover means. Does it mean like what? She's 
reorganizing she's invading the space like what does that what does that mean yeah baby glacier it's it's a big deal in the libra friend world so i think we would have to revisit it one more time a last hurrah favorite hat color i like a navy blue hat i like a gray and black hat um but radical dan does that give you something to think about like this is a conversation and there needs to be like an there needs to be like an agreement and some honesty 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 upfront honesty wondrous star from the future on twitch welcome to the string king laborman this is a republic mob wondrous star i'm not a king i am just a boy right that's right you're just a boy you're not <laughs> I'm just really enjoying being a fish. I'm not a king either. There's no King Triton or anything like that down here. I'm just, you know, every fish for himself. Ah, Griffin Moore. Is this art? Ana Yume says yes. Now, I know, Griffin Moore, that this is a stock puppet and not like a, a, a handcrafted puppet, but this is probably a lot closer to what I'm going to be doing in the future. Oh, hello to you, Griffin Moore. I'm Kevin. I live beneath the sea. That's Kevin. He lives beneath the sea. Um, but yeah, Griff, check this out. So I've got, I've got two cameras. I've got my webcam, and then I've got, uh, I've got my motion capture camera, and like. All my puppets suck, dude. All my puppets, I, all my puppets fucking suck, and I'm still learning, and I'm so annoyed. Um, I'm so annoyed because it takes forever to build a puppet. Um, but ideally, the goal is to be able to have a guest and be able to like talk to them, and then have a. Pfft, I gotta click the right thing. And then have me interrupt and say, well, I've got something to say from down underneath the sea. You know what I mean? Except it wouldn't be him because he's a stock puppet. And we're going to leave the stock puppets at home, Kevin. You can't leave me. I already have so much personality. You can help with that, Griff? I've been to your website. I'm tempted to, I'm, I was tempted to buy some of your mouth sets. Gang, if anyone is interested in this character animator stuff, Griff, uh, Griffin Moore, like, has... You have, like, a course, too, right? He sells puppets. He makes puppets. And I think he has a course. Thank you, Tucker. I'm so happy your Photoshop game has improved. You just got done with class? That's awesome. I don't have, like... I don't have enough cash to throw around this month. But... I will probably wind up buying your mouth sets. The Hilda mouth set is awesome. You'll show me how to do the guest speaker thing for free? Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. NDI is the way. Let's um let's connect off stream. Thank you so much for the offer. That's really kind of you. Did we give a shout out? Thank you for giving a shout out to Griff. Oh, patient zero. Pleasure. Pleasure to have you here as always. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you, patient zero, my sweet friend from above the sea level. Above the sea. Above the sea. Up where it's drier, I'm gonna cry because you're leaving me. He's just a horrible vocalist. No one, please, let's just let's just not ask him to sing, okay? He's giving me like such Florence Foster Jenkins vibes. He is not a heartbreaker and he is not smexy, okay? He is a naughty boy. And he is an interrupter. And we're trying to have a very authentic, grounded conversation about boundaries. And he just comes in pressing on my boundaries. Do you know, under the sea, there are no boundaries. It's just a big ocean. I expect too much of him. 
That's right. I expect too much of a fish. He's got free puppets. What do you want, Bernie Sanders? Um, uh, I could, I, let me see. Can I do a Bernie Sanders? Um, um, people of America are trapped by a, a corporate establishment that does not appreciate them. Eh, it's okay. Could use some work. <laughs> I saw Floof. I want to make my own puppets. I want to own... Yeah. Uh, corporate establishment. The 1%. Um, I want to own my own puppets, though. I'm working on it, though. I'm working on it. I am working on it. Um, oh, Catherine, I've missed you, too. I'm doing really well. Thank you. I've been, like, feeling a little, like, physically, like, just a little off the last couple of days. And I'm hoping that it's, it's temporary. Um, and, uh, I'm figuring out what the future looks like. Denise has given, has, has done me the incredible solid of, uh, oh, Radical Dan, please tell me if that was a useful answer. And if it was not, um, message me and I'll do what I can to clarify. Um, beep, 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 beep. She has started to edit down some of my, vi some of my streams into videos, which is great. Um, so I'm going to get my YouTube organized. The way the YouTube is going to look is there's going to be, um, there's going to be a the main channel, then there's going to be a VODs channel, um, and then eventually stream highlights will move on to a separate channel. Um, Denise is just the fucking best. Can we just go off about my fucking queen of a wife? Just how cool and beautiful and talented and kind and patient. Do you understand? Do you understand how loud I am? She lives with me. She bought me this. She bought me something to make more noise with because I do these coal mine songs, these welcome songs, and I literally tear the skin in my middle finger by doing it. I open the skin, reopen it, re-injure it almost daily. It does not heal as a result. So she bought me a tambourine to make more noise so that I wouldn't rip open the skin of my finger from doing finger snaps. I know, I know 80s. I didn't yet. I just, another reason she's amazing. She lets me, she get, lets me get away with calling her my wife when I haven't actually married her yet. I know, I'm trash, I'm garbage, just. <laughs> I'm garbage, just. Just, you do what you gotta do. Take me down. Take me lower. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, okay, look, Tucker Krat. Let me explain something to you, Tucker Krat. When I'm on the phone with someone, when I'm on the phone with the doctor, and the woman I love, okay, needs medical attention, and the doctor's office is being shitty. And I want to get on the phone and I want to say, hey, you need to help her. When I say girlfriend, first of all, doesn't feel right. I would call her my partner, but girlfriend or partner, they don't respect. When I say, you need to cut your shit, you need to see my wife. They snap into action. Woo! It started out small, okay? We would just say wife or husband to, wife or husband to, to, to get taken seriously on the phone and then I started calling her my wife and she called me started calling me her husband to other people friends and now the chat we're basically married we talk about it but also she, also it's like there's kind of no rush like we've been like sort of like yes or no about actually getting married I kind of I want it more than more than I feel like she does sometimes. But it's something that we're going to get to. We're going to get to, and we're going to get to it when it's the right time for us. You know what I mean? Wait a minute. Griffin Moore, have you ever... You've gotten a welcome song, yeah? Or no? Because now I want to use my tambo. You've never gotten a welcome song. Well, Griffin Moore, I need to know. Whoa, whoa. 
Hurt? Whoa. Okay. So, I need to know where you're from. I need to know your favorite sandwich and your pet's name if you have a pet. Kelton, it's a great story. It's a long story. I will get to it after this welcome song, Contambo. You know what I mean? Kelton on YouTube. What a pleasure it is to have you. Drotante, I'm going to get to that story. You heard me earlier, right? That puzzle's in the mail. And I also, I included a, 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 a letter to you, a personalized letter from the desk of Lieberman. Legal support is, support, security has been important on our end. We've gotten married on paper, but neither have time nor money to do the ceremony we want. Copy. Um, okay. Pittsburgh Beyond Burgers. Sasha. Oh, Beyond Burgers are so good. All right. Gang, we got a welcome song here, and I need your help. All right. Griffin Moore is from Pittsburgh. They love a Beyond Burger. Have a pet named Sasha. Working in a coal mine all day, every single day with Sasha right by your side. Making sure that everybody knows that a Beyond Burger is a fine sandwich to have in a coal mine. Having such a good time, having a good time. Making sure that everyone has some vegetarian options in the coal mine. Such a good time in the coal mine. Woo! Now that's a Tambo welcome song for Griffin Moore. Welcome to the community. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you. <laughs> the goal, the goal, okay, if we're getting, if we're getting real, if we're getting so real, Full band would be amazing, but what's probably gonna happen? Ah, oh, full animated band, yes. Like, like my my Chuck E. Cheese style band would be amazing. But the goal is to have like things on pulleys and have like a kazoo or like 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 the um, what's the uh, the Peter Gabriel like vocoder or whatever um and uh and have like a bass like a kick drum and cymbals i originally it was like finger cymbals and whatever and they're all wearing the coal mine hats exactly and if ophelia live ever comes back i'm gonna say please send me that coal mine helmet oh daniela marie can we talk about the promonti sandwich real quick can we talk about a promonti sandwich I never thought I would see the day, Daniela Marie, where I would be able to talk about a Promonti sandwich on a stream, but here we go. The Promonti sandwich is delicious fresh bread, meat, cheese, fresh slaw, and beautifully thick cut fries. A sandwich from the gods. Yes, Griffin Moore, exactly. Slaw and fries on bread. That's what's up. Um, sh Mwah. perfect. Uh, I was in a short film called Saturday. Oh no, I was in a I was in a feature called Saturday that I have never seen, Kelton. I've never seen it. I've never seen the movie, so I have no idea if my work was any good. I was thinking of a short that I did called Up Next and mixing up the two. Um. Yeah, I, I would love to have my own in-studio band like The Roots, but they're all cartoons. Um, we got some some Pennsylvania folk here. Wondrous Star from the Future asks if I read any good books lately. Sadly, no. The last book that I finished that was great was Console Wars. Um, but I read that, like, damn, like, late summer. So I'm, I'm slacking on books. I'm listening to um, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck on because the entire audiobook is on YouTube. And and if anybody's into ebooks or audiobooks, boy do I have a suggestion for you. Check out the Libby app, L I B B Y. It is a library app that connects you to the database from your local library. It's free and you have access to a massive database of ebooks and audiobooks. It's the shit. So good. Um Ooh, Subway, white, mac, white chip macadamia nut cookies? No, those are not food. Nothing from Subway is food, Shamir. I'm going to look up the ingredients to that right now, and I'm going to freak out. Do you want... Wait, hold on. This is a mistake I made back during the source-fed days. I would tell people things about their food that they did not want me to tell them. 
Do you want me to find this out? Do you want to take this journey with me, Shamir? Because if you don't, that is totally cool. And I'm not going to force you to learn that. Yes. Baby Glacier also started the audiobook. Yeah, there's like things I like it and things things I like and things I don't about it. Um, but I'm I'm continuing with it. I'm also obsessed with anything that the future does on YouTube. Any of their whiteboard sessions, Chris Doe's stuff is really good. Um Glenn is very into Libby. And Catherine is very not into sugar. Um Kelton, I, I'll say that the subtle book. Um, there are concepts in it that I agree with and concepts that I don't, but I think the, I think the important thing is as we grow, we don't stop learning and we don't look to anyone as our guru and we take in a lot of viewpoints and figure out what, how we feel about things. So I think it is definitely worth listening to. And there is a point of view in there that is strong. And some points I agree with. Um, let's see. Danielle Marie says, so I was yesterday years old when I heard that Pennsylvanians are the only ones who say they are from PA. Like we use the abbreviation. I guess no other state does that. I think it's just because it ends in a, like I wouldn't say I'm from NJ. Feels weird. PA. Pet Philadelphia PA. You know, Pittsburgh PA. Rhode Island says I'm from R.I. But do you only say it in text or do you say it out loud? Subtle art was hit and miss for you too, Cap Capulet. Well, I'm glad that I'm not the only one who like likes some of I don't I don't like the tone of it. I like the core of the idea. Ana Yume's in Philly right now! What's up? My mom's family is from South Jersey. Okay, Kelton. Here's a meet cute story. Listen up. I only tell it like three or four times a year. So. <clears throat> Denise and I met um, a little over six years ago. We met a little over six years ago um, doing sketch comedy. We both did sketch comedy at the I.O. West Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. And um, uh, Gina Ippolito, who was Denise's sketch team's director at the time, threw a brunch at her apartment. Um, Gina is now a writer on The Unicorn on CBS. So I go, and it's a BY, like, like it's like a potluck brunch. So I go to the 4 and 20 restaurant, which is sadly no longer with us, and I bought a fresh peach pie. That's right, what a fly 80s guy. 80s knows a fresh peach pie. These are fresh peaches. This is like a $17 pie. Welcome, Shovel Knight. How are you? Good to see you. How's your family? What's going on? So I go, I bring this peach pie. I set it on the brunch table. I look across the brunch table, and who is staring at me but this beautiful, a woman she we lock eyes i know i'm fucking doomed at this point in my life i'm like i just got out of a bad relationship i don't want to be tied down i want to figure myself out i've got so much to work on so much i'm gonna do and and then bang doomed i need to talk to her i need to know who she is who is this person However, I got sidelined and wound up having to talk to, uh, I wound up having to talk to Gina's manager for the majority of the time that I was at the party. Couldn't find Denise. Ran out of time. I had to go to rehearsal. I leave. There she is. She's outside. I'm like, hey, hi, how you doing? Matt Lieberman. I'm, I'm on DJ Fawcett. Oh, sidekick. Cool. Yeah, I haven't caught any of your shows, you know, but... Uh -huh. Uh, playing it super fucking cool. Baby Glacier says, I'm fucking doomed. LMAO, I can't wait for that moment in my life. When it comes, you will know. And it will destroy you. <laughs> anyway. We become friends on Facebook. And at this point, all I know about Denise is that I met her at a brunch. 
so she must love brunch. So for the next month, I throw brunches. I start a weekly brunch club to try to get her to come to a brunch so that I can talk to her. Um, because I wanted to ask her out, but I didn't want to do it without talking to her first because that would be crazy. So I throw a month of brunches. She doesn't come. Okay. The next time I see Denise, I am on a date at the comedy theater that we both do comedy at with a girl who I had no idea was a friend of Denise's. I am, to be fair, completely mortified and having an absolute and utter panic attack of the utmost degree because I'm having a terrible time at this date, but I don't want my date to feel like I'm talking to Denise more or like that I'm not interested in her, that I'm flirting on the date because then that's really bad and I don't want everybody to think that, but I don't want Denise to think I'm having a great time on this date because I'm really not having a great time on this date and I wanted to talk to you, but I'm on a date with... Having a meltdown, okay? Complete meltdown. Night ends. I tell this girl, you know, probably shouldn't do this again. Didn't have a great time. Which, for me, was progress. Because there is there is nothing that Lieberman at 25 loves more than a second date. Anyway. More time goes by. Halloween night. Um, I go to an Emerson alums. I went to Emerson College. An Emerson alums in L.A. Halloween party with Shaman Steve and some friends. Have a terrible time. I'm like, I'm that person because I didn't really socialize super well in college that knows people and people know me, but they don't necessarily want to talk to me more than other people at the party. So I'm just like feeling really low, really bad about myself. And I, I leave, get back to my car. Yes, Volker agrees, honesty above all else. Um, I get back to my car, starts pouring rain. In L.A., it doesn't really rain very often. And it rained so fucking hard. And all, I'm like, I'm like, man. So, I had been invited by my friend Mike to a party that wasn't his party. So, like, I wasn't invited to the party, but he told me to come to it. And I felt weird about going to a party I hadn't been invited to. And it's pouring rain. And the party's in Hollywood. I'm like, oh, I don't know. All right, I, I'll just, I'll, I'll go, I'll stop by, whatever. It's just pouring, pouring, pouring. I can't find parking. I'm like searching for parking. I'm just like, man, all I want to do is go back to the valley, get a an Al Pastor torta, go home, watch Arrow on Netflix, eat my sandwich, and go to sleep. Finally, I find parking. I'm just sitting there, pouring rain, waiting for it to let up. It's not going to let up. Finally, I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to run as fast as I can through this rain. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to take my costume pieces off so they don't get ruined. I'm going to say hi to Mike. I'm going to give him a hug, and I'm going to go home. So, I, I, mind you, I was dressed for Halloween as Daniel Radcliffe in the movie Horns, which is a movie that I've never seen, but it was an excuse to wear a a nice like jacket like a casual jacket a wig and a pair of horns so i took off my wig and my horns so i was just uh, a dude in a jacket hello steve and uh shamir you enjoy that mukbang um shovel knight i was and i was also wearing horns so i took my horns off i ran through the rain I got to the party, and as soon as I get to the freaking party, I kid you not, rain clears up. Isn't that the funniest thing? I go inside this party. I find Mike. We hug. And then uh, this other guy that I know, Jonathan, says, would I like a martini? I say, yes, I would like a martini. He pulls all the fixings for a martini out of a messenger bag makes me a plastic martini glass and shakes me a martini and gives me a gin martini. 
So I'm like, well, I got it. I got to drink this martini. This is turning into a pretty cool night. More people from the comedy world that I know are here at this party. Chatting, chatting, chatting. Motherfucker, wouldn't you know it. Crowd parts. There she is! Oh! I make a beeline for Denise. And this is, I kid you not, this is what I say after, um, hi, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> um freaking magic okay so um i i go up to her and i say hey so i have been trying to talk to you for like three months i i really want to get to know you better i want to take you out to dinner can I have you not your number? I'll call you tomorrow. Just very direct. Like, look, I've been trying to talk to you for months. Can I call you tomorrow? Give me your number. I'll call you tomorrow. I want to take you out to dinner. And she thought I was completely full of shit. I'm a comedian. It's Halloween. I'm not even wearing a fucking costume. Come on. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm so serious. Please give me your number. I will call you tomorrow. I want to take you out to dinner. I want to get to know you better. I have wanted to get to know you better. I've been trying to talk to you since that brunch. And thankfully, thank God, a mutual friend of ours, a guy named John, comes up and uh, and he's like, oh, my two favorite people. And uh, while I was talking to somebody else, he thankfully he told Denise like, no, this is this is a like, this is a really good guy. Like this is not a, he's not he's not a jerk. This is a nice this is a a nice dude. This is one of the nicest dudes. Thank you, John. Thank you, John Wyatt. Wherever you are, um, I fucking love John Wyatt. Uh, and then uh, and then we kiss outside on the lawn at around midnight it was nice and then the next day i called her and we went out to dinner on on that monday and that's that that is the story so what can we learn from the story To be honest, Kelton, like at the beginning, I could not tell you. I could not tell you. Just the way, just the way she smiled at me. It was over. I was done. Finished. Consider me well, like well done. You can pull me out of. You can pull me out of the oven. You're not gonna cook me anymore. I've been cooked. Um, and I knew it too, which made me super nervous. Uh, sometimes you just know. And the thing is, right? Like, I get mad when people put too much emphasis on physical attraction because it means so little in the grand scheme of your actual relationship and partnership through life. Um, Kelton, you're asking me a lot of very personal questions. Um, but what I will say is, um, is the the first the first year was was tough i had a lot of growing up to do and we had a lot of like learning each other to do and i think everybody goes through that um i don't think you can be afraid of conflict i don't think you can be afraid of challenging each other or fighting um and at the end of the day right you have to have some key things in common just in terms of like what do you both want your life to look like down the road? Like, for example, one of the things that I think bonded us very early on is like neither of us want to have kids. If one of us wanted to have kids and the other hardcore didn't want to have kids, we sh would not be able to work together. And I have friends who've been down that road and it doesn't work. You can't wait and hope that someone is going to change. What you can do is present your boundaries and say, this is what I expect from a partner. 
What do you expect? And you see where you can meet. What what is able to shift and what isn't? But if your visions for the future fundamentally don't look the same, that's a big red flag. If you want to live in Egypt and they don't, it's probably a, not a good use of your time to be together. But I think I think more than anything, what up, DJ Spree? How are you? I want to know how you met your wife. Granted, I don't have a lot of time, um, but I want to know that story. DJ's Disco Luck, this Saturday, 3 p.m. Central. Be there. I will be there, as will Shaman Steve and Tipsy Tune. Um, Grumpy Sensei says it's 1 p.m. What do you mean? Grumpy Sensei is here, too? Everybody, Schlee is here. Everybody's here to listen to my my falling in love story. This is so killer. Um, and now just like advice. Um, thank you, Sammy, for the time check. Um, dealing with the kids convo right now. He says we're too young, so it doesn't matter. Uh, how, how young? Shamir, I'm not going to read that. But if anyone wants to go to YouTube, or you can see right there, Shamir's hilarious parrot's name. I'm not going to read it aloud, but there it is. Steve Lenhart photo taking back the Facebook chat crown, you absolute king. Thank you. Um, So I think, okay, 22. Yeah, things change over time, but um, they don't change that much. I think if as you as you get closer to like 25 30 it gets more serious but like if if what you want is to be married to the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with in the next 3ish years then yeah it's probably not going to be with somebody who fundamentally doesn't want the same picture that you have that's all good Kelton I just had to figure out how I was going to answer it do you know what I mean um but, uh, but yeah, there are certain things that have to be in common. Attraction is just going to get you to start talking. Beyond that, it's really not important. Like, I can't understand why anybody would marry somebody they were just very sexually attracted to. You're looking for a partner. You're looking for somebody who's going to be able to see you for exactly who you are and love you for it and not be afraid. You're looking for acceptance, and they're looking for acceptance and consistency. Can you find somebody who can take you on your worst fucking day and say, they're having a bad day? And can you do the same for them? So, like, when you say, like, did, like, has it always been peachy keen? Absolutely not. But I don't think any good relationship has been. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. It's, it's, you put two people in a room and you ask them not to bottle anything up and just be honest with each other, you're going to have conflict. But can you, first of all, can you talk, can you communicate honestly and respectfully? Can you listen to each other, understand where each other are coming from? And on top of that, you know, like, can you just like really, really, really love another person and want, want what they want for them, you know? And it's, it's, it's hard. And, and when, when we met, I was not that dude. I wasn't, I wrestled with it. I didn't want to settle down, but I also was just madly, madly in love with her. And I didn't want to tell her that either. I was not ready to that, for that to be the thing was not, but it was, You know, you got to be okay with the fact that you're going to grow and you got to grow together. And I think someone asked me if it wasn't the attraction, what was it? It was the fact that she really, really challenged me and that I wanted more. And that when we did have arguments or when we did clash, we didn't walk away from the table, so to speak. Like, I think a relationship ends when somebody... When, when one or more partners stop trying to make things work and to fix things and to work on things. When someone stops communicating, shuts down, and just says, well, you know, it's, it's on the other person. No, it's always on both parties. Always. 
Dotante says, met my girlfriend during quarantine. Now we may or may not live together. Hey, can I say... I don't know that I would have gotten through this year if Denise and I weren't living together. That's one thing. That wasn't what I was going to say. But, like, you know, there is no right time to move in together. Denise and I moved in together, like, seven months into our relationship. Like, not long. It was a risk. We took it. We never lived with a partner before. Best decision ever. Best. Yeah, I also think there's more. there's more to talk about, right? Like, I think that uh I think that crushes are bullshit. I think that when you don't uh when you don't just be up front and tell somebody how you're feeling about them, you're potentially creating a situation where you're being manipulative, which is just shitty. Don't manipulate people. I discovered that's one thing I discovered, man. Was like, "Oh, like, I tell lots of little white lies to avoid conflict. That's super manipulative and shitty. You're robbing your partner. You're robbing another person of the truth and giving them the opportunity to decide how they feel about the truth. Everybody deserves the truth. Everybody. Ana Yume, that's fucking amazing. Can we get some A's in chat for the first anniversary? A's in chat for our first anniversary. That's awesome. Danielle and Marie, we moved in after two weeks. I guess we'll see what happens. Just try not to ever go to bed angry. And no, no situation ever gets resolved in a day. Um, and always look for opportunities to make the other person feel loved. Best secret in the... Like... Dudes. Or... Well, no. Dudes and girls. But, like, people who have partners who might like flowers, best one of the best stupidly simple pieces of advice ever I ever received was through Trisha Hirschberger, my former co-worker. Her husband says, I don't understand why men don't just buy flowers. It's so easy. They're so cheap, and it means so much. Surprise flowers are really just surprise things. Don't wait for... A holiday and don't think of it a holiday as an imposition people think of valentine's day as an imposition it's an opportunity to do something cool for someone you love that makes them feel really special um uh what if there's a specific reason why you can't tell them how you feel because in that specific situation it'd be incredibly selfish of you and only be for you to get something off of your chest i think that's just your point of view man it might not give you the result that you want but I, you have to decide. I'm not going to judge. But, like, let me, let me put it to you this way. Okay. You are in the other person's position. And your very good friend is... Well, let me, let me ask you a question. Uh, you're thinking of a very specific situation that happened to me. Yeah. Um, I, I am your very good friend. And I have intense feelings about you that color how I interact with you every day. I think about you all the time. I've never told you. And I feel like if I tell you, you're going to think this, you're going to think that I'm just doing this selfish thing all for me. Now you might feel, well, I would think that. So I guess there is a kindness there that you're not burdening me with this additional stuff when I'm going through a thing. But at the same time, you're making a massive fucking assumption about their reaction, which like is not nice. It's not nice for you to say, well, this is what you're going to do. You don't fucking know what I'm going to do. Let me decide. I don't want to have to look back and like interrogate every interaction I had with you to see if you were like, Subtly trying to push me towards you or something like that. Shamir, we can both agree that making a puppet of making a puppet of a a real person who does not want to be made into a puppet is inherently a little creepy. I'm not going to do it. Um Yeah, huge gray area scenarios. Okay. You know. Okay, it's 8.30. I really do have to scoot. 
So let me see who's on so we can raid out for the Twitch audience. Thank you, everybody who hung out tonight. This has been a really cool stream. I hope that you've enjoyed it wherever you're watching from. I really appreciate you. She was, is my best friend, was moving to a different continent. We continue to talk every day and still do. So then let me let me say this to you, Tiberius. Let me say this to you, Tiberius. Can you handle it being open between the two of you that you have and have had and had feelings for the other person, but that nothing's going to come of it? Because if you can, you can still be friends. I don't see why that's wrong at all. Okay. Hmm. Good night, Facebook chat. I told one of my best guy friends I had feelings for him, and while he didn't reciprocate, we're still very close. So it really didn't change anything. But here's what it did change, Baby Glacier. You weren't harboring a massive secret, and you didn't have to spend any more time wondering whether or not when you told him your massive secret, he would have feelings for you. Instead, you were able to find your way through processing those feelings and then just be his friend. That's the coolest shit. Thank you, Shamir, for the $2 super chat. Bye, Matt. Love you, our Libra friend, Shamir. Shamir, you rule. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure hanging out with you. Come back anytime. Um, well, I'm sorry that that happened, Steve, but at the same time, I don't know. You, you have the right to decide, but in my opinion, I would rather know and be able to take all that brain space that the crush fucking occupied and give it to me? Or to someone else or to something else. All right. Uh, let's see here. Bye, Volker. All right. We're going to... Oh, Spree just went live. Let's raid into DJ Spree. Hey, wherever you are, whoever you are, however you are, I hope that this stream has brightened your day. I hope that I've been able to help you in some kind of way. Stay kind to yourself. Stay motivated. I love you. You are seen. You are heard. You belong. Whatever's going on in your life, you've gotten through worse and you will continue to get through. Everything always works out for you. I will see you tomorrow for, uh, for the only show. And, uh, I don't know yet if I'm doing an evening stream. I will let you know on the only show. Um, new stuff is coming. I hope everybody gets excited for it. I'm excited. Um, figuring out what 2021 is going to look like. And um, the future is very bright for all of us. Um, the uh, message. Ooh, I like Spree. Sounds good to me. I like that. Um, yeah, I will put it in the Discord whether or not I'm doing a stream. Um, much love to everybody. Take care. Have a great night. Bye-bye.